ISQM1 quality management for firms that perform audits or reviews of financial statements or other assurance or related service engagements. So it's any engagement that a firm is going to accept. Okay, I've highlighted the scope, the objective, and then the requirements. And then I've highlighted specifically two requirements. The system of quality management, which explains all of the components that they want the firm to have quality management on. And one of those components is what I've specifically highlighted here, the acceptance and continuance, because this is often where this standard is tested. They can test you on any of the other components. Don't think that it's only here. It's just most commonly tested, or ISQC1 was most commonly tested here. The rest of them, guys, just to be aware of the components of that system, the risk assessment, the governance, the ethical requirements, the engagement performance, resources, information communication, and monitoring. And then in terms of the application, guys, for every requirement, you then have an application paragraph that addresses a little bit more practically the requirement. And so again, I've highlighted this application paragraph because these explain to you nicely what needs to be adhered to or considered in that acceptance and continuance of the relationships. Okay, so let's first go and have a look at the quality management system paragraph. And there you can see it, the firm's system of quality management, here are all the components, the eight components that should be included in this firm's system of quality management, the risk assessment process, governance, ethical requirements, acceptance and continuance, engagement performance, resources, information and communication, and monitoring and remediation processes. Okay. I want to just focus on acceptance and continuance, but guys, I have highlighted key paragraphs along with the application paragraphs. So go and copy those, and remember, when you do the copying, read them, so it's not only copying highlights across, so that you've seen it before, that you are aware of it, because it's a level two. Let's go to the acceptance and continuance. Paragraph 30, the firm shall establish the following quality objectives that address acceptance and continuance. Judgments about whether to accept or not based on the integrity of the client and the ethical values and the firm's ability to perform the engagement. In addition, the financial and operational priorities of the firm to make sure that they do not lead to inappropriate judgments about accepting or not. Okay, let's go to A67. So A67, acceptance and continuance. Information obtained about the nature and the circumstances of the engagement may include the industry and their regulatory factors, the nature and the size and the organizational structure. But what is it that helps us to consider the integrity and the ethical values of the client? This is the one that you're going to pick up mostly. The nature of the entity, the complexity of its ownership, the nature of the client's operations, including their business practices. Are we wanting to associate with this client? The attitude of the principal owners and the aggressive interpretation of accounting standards and internal control environments. Whether they are aggressively trying to keep the fee as low as possible, which will reduce the work we do to maybe not pick up any unethical behaviors. If they're trying to limit our scope, so ultimately by reducing the fee, they would be limiting our scope because we can't do all the work we need to. But they may not reduce the fee, and they may specifically say to us, you cannot contact the previous auditors. That's a scope limitation. Okay, any criminal activities or money laundering? What was the reason that there is now a new opportunity for us to take on this engagement? Why were the previous auditors not, rep or did they not continue as the current auditors? Why is there a vacancy? 
and then business reputations of related parties. Guys, this is very NB because we are not going to get this anywhere else. So when we need to consider the integrity of a client, whether it be from a firm's perspective or from the individual partner's perspective, you need to refer to A68. Okay, so when we get to pre-engagement and the partner now actually taking on an audit, we will come back to A68 to consider the client itself. Okay, moving on, we then need to look at the firm's ability to perform the engagement. And it says you've got to look at the availability of the appropriate resources, access to the persons that you need, whether they can adhere to the relevant ethical requirements. Other factors to consider, the reporting deadline, so time, is there sufficient time? The availability of individuals with competence, capabilities, including time, once again, do they need directing and supervising? Do they have knowledge of the industry? Is it a group and do we need component auditors? Experts, are they available if we need them? Is an engagement quality review needed? Per ISQM2 or needed is here. ISQM1 will tell you if you need it, but ISQM2 will tell you who should be appointed as that reviewer. Need for technical resources because they've got IT applications. And the need for intellectual resources, so our own methodologies that may be linked to IT to assist in auditing this client if they are RT based. Okay, so these are the very important elements of ISQM1. Let's go to ISQM2. ISQM2 engagement quality reviews. So scope, objective, requirements are all highlighted. I would like to focus on the appointment and eligibility of the engagement quality reviewer. So let's go to 17. Paragraph 17 says the firm shall have policies or procedures that require the assignment of this quality control reviewer to be competent and capable and must have sufficient time and appropriate authority, must be able to comply with the ethical requirements and laws and regulations. Okay, let's go to A5. And A5, you can see references back to ISQM1 saying they must have an understanding of the professional standards, legal and regulatory requirements, knowledge of the industry, experience with similar industry, clients in similar industries. Okay, and they must understand their responsibilities as an engagement quality reviewer. In addition to that, they must adhere to the relevant ethical requirements. And they must consider if there are any threats to objectivity, some examples of threats, but you'll find all of those in the CPC, which is referenced again. Okay, let's go and have a look at your class example. 